Good morning, everybody. A couple of days ago, I said that we are in a make or break moment when it comes to America's middle class. Uh, we either have a country where everybody fends for themselves, or we create a country where everybody does their fair share, everybody's got a fair chance, and uh, we ensure that there's fair play out there. Now, to ensure fair play, uh, one of the things that I talked about was the importance of making sure we implement financial reform, Wall Street reform, that was passed last year. And a key component of that was making sure that we have a consumer watchdog in place who can police what mortgage brokers and payday lenders and other non-bank financial entities are able to do when it comes to consumers. Uh, this is a big deal. About one in five people use these kinds of uh, mechanisms to finance uh, everything from buying a house to cashing their checks. And we passed a law last year that said we need this consumer watchdog in place to make sure that people aren't taken advantage of. Now, we have nominated somebody, Richard Cordray, former Attorney General and Treasurer of Ohio, who everybody says is highly qualified. The majority of attorney generals, Republican and Democrat from across the country, have said this is somebody who can do the job with integrity, who has a tradition of being a bipartisan uh, individual who looks out for the public interest and is ready to go. And he actually helped set up the Consumer Finance Protection Board. Uh, this morning, Senate Republicans blocked his nomination, refusing to let the Senate even uh, go forward with an up or down vote on Mr. Cordray. And this makes absolutely no sense. Consumers across the country understand that part of the reason we got into the final uh, financial mess that we did was because regulators were not doing their jobs. People were not paying attention to what was happening in the housing market. People weren't paying attention to who was being taken advantage of. There were folks who were making a lot of money taking advantage of American consumers. This individual's job is to make sure that individual consumers are protected. Everybody from seniors to young people who are looking for student loans to members of our armed services who are probably more vulnerable than just about anybody uh, when it comes to uh, unscrupulous financial practices. There is no reason why Mr. Cordray should not be nominated and should not be confirmed by the Senate and should not be doing his job right away uh, in order to carry out his, uh, his mandate and his mission. Uh, so I just want to send a message to the Senate. We are not giving up on this. We are going to keep on going at it. Uh, we are not going to allow politics as usual on Capitol Hill to stand in the way of American consumers being protected by unscrupulous financial uh, operators. And we're going to keep on pushing on this issue. Now, uh, the second thing I want to make clear about is that uh, with respect to the payroll tax, you guys have all seen our countdown clock behind us. This is about doing, uh, making sure that everybody is doing their fair share uh, and that the middle class does not see their taxes go up by $1,000 in 23 days. Uh, and we've heard uh, recently some intimations from the Senate Majority Leader and from uh, the Speaker of the House, or the, the Senate Minority Leader and the, speak, uh, and the Speaker of the House, that they think uh, we should do a payroll tax, uh, but uh, the question is what price will they extract from the President in order to get it done? And I just want to make clear, this is not about me. They shouldn't extend the payroll tax cut for me. They shouldn't extend unemployment insurance for me. This is for 160 million people who in 20, 23 days are going to see their taxes go up if Congress doesn't act. This is for 5 million individuals who are out there looking for a job and can't find a job right now in a tough economy who could end up not being able to pay their bills or keep their house if Congress doesn't act. So uh, rather than trying to figure out what can they uh, extract politically from me in order to get this thing done, what they need to do is be focused on what's good for the economy, 
what's good for jobs and what's good for the American people. Uh, and I've made very clear, uh, I do not expect Congress to go home unless the payroll tax cut is extended and unless unemployment insurance is extended. Uh, it would be wrong for families, but it would also be wrong for the economy as a whole. All right, with that, I'm going to take a couple questions. Ben. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a very busy time. If I may, I'd like to ask you about two other, uh, quickly two other important issues in the news. Republican candidates have um, taken aim at your approach to foreign policy, particularly the Middle East and Israel, and accused you of, uh, of appeasement. I wanted to get your reaction to that. And also, I'm wondering if you personally intervened in any way in halting the sale of the morning after uh, pill to those under 17, and whether you think uh, politics trumps science in this case. Um, Ask Osama bin Laden and uh, the 22 out of 30 top al-Qaeda leaders who have been taken off the field uh, whether I engage in appeasement uh, or whoever's left out there. Ask them about that. Uh, with respect to uh, the Plan B, uh, I did not uh, get involved in the process. This was a decision that was made by Kathleen Sebelius, uh, uh, the Secretary of HHS. Uh, I will say this, uh, as the father of two daughters, um, uh, I think it is important for us to make sure that uh, you know, we apply some common sense to various rules when it comes to uh, over-the-counter medicine. And uh, as I understand it, the reason Kathleen made this decision uh, was uh, she could not be confident that a 10-year-old or an 11-year-old going to a drugstore uh, should be able, alongside bubble gum or batteries, uh, be able to buy uh, a, uh, a medication that uh, potentially, if not used properly, could end up having an adverse effect. Uh, and I think most parents would probably feel the same way. Uh, so, uh, you know, the expectation here is, I think it's very important to understand that for women, for those over 17, this continues to be something that uh, you can go in and purchase from a drugstore. It has been deemed safe by the FDA. Nobody's challenging that. When it comes to 12-year-olds or 13-year-olds, uh, the question is, can we have confidence uh, that they would potentially use uh, plan B properly. Uh, and her judgment was that there was not enough evidence that this potentially could be used improperly in a way that had adverse health effects uh, on those young people. Do you fully support the decision? I do. Mr. President, is a recess appointment for Richard Cordray on the table, uh, number one? And number two, uh, the Italian Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister, indicated today he may be coming to the White House next month. Do you think he and other European leaders are stepping up in the way you've urged them to, to sort of clear up the debt crisis? Uh, I will not take any options off the table when it comes to getting Richard Cordray in as director of the Consumer Finance Protection Board. Uh, and, and I want to repeat what I said earlier. Uh, this is a law that was passed by Congress that I signed into law that is designed solely to protect American consumers. I don't think there's any cons consumer out there, I don't think there's any American out there who thinks that the reason we got into the big financial mess that we did was because of too much regulation of Wall Street or the financial services industry. I, I take it back. I'm sure there are some folks in the financial service industry who make that argument, although I'm not sure that they make it with a straight face. Um, so uh, you know, let's just take a very specific example. All the families out there who have now lost their home after having paid their mortgage uh, over and over again because they were told that they could afford this home. They didn't understand all the documentation that was involved. This was peddled deliberately to them, even though a mortgage broker might have known that there was no way that they could keep up with these payments. And now they're out on the street uh, because nobody was making sure that there's fair play and fair dealing uh, in the mortgage industry. on Now, wh why wouldn't we want to have somebody just to make sure that 
people are being treated fairly. You know, especially when not only is that family affected, but our whole economy is affected. This is part of what I was talking about a couple of days ago. You know, we, we have a Congress right now, uh, Republicans in Congress right now, uh, who seem to have entirely forgotten how we got into this mess. And part of the reason was because we did not empower our regulators to make sure that they were ensuring fair play. That's what the Consumer Finance Protection Board is designed to do. You know, we had Holly Petraeus, wife of General Petraeus, who's been working to make sure that our armed services uh, personnel aren't taken advantage of. They get transferred to a base, and uh, next thing they know, they're, they're taking out loans that they think are a good deal, but it turns out that they're paying 100, 150, 200%, uh, 200 uh, interest rates. Why wouldn't we want somebody in place to make sure that doesn't happen? It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, so the bottom line is, you asked about the recess appointment. Uh, we're going to look at all our options. Uh, my hope and expectation is, is that uh, the Republicans who block this nomination come to their senses. Um, and I know that some of them have made an argument, well, we just want to sort of make some modifications in the law. Well, they're free to introduce a bill and get that passed. But part of what's happened over on Capitol Hill not just on this issue, but on every issue, is they will hold up nominations. Well-qualified judges aren't getting a vote. I've got uh, you know, assistant secretaries to the Treasury who get held up for no reason, just because they're trying to see if they can uh, use that to reverse some sort of uh, law that's already been passed. And, and, and that's part of what gets the American people so frustrated, because they don't feel like this thing is on the level. European uh, crisis, do you have any oh, uh, on the European debt crisis. Um, I am uh, obviously very concerned about what's happening in Europe. Uh, I've expressed those concerns repeatedly to uh, President Sarkozy, Chancellor Merkel, uh, all the key leaders involved. Uh, I think they now recognize the urgency of doing something serious and bold. Uh, the question is whether they can muster the political will to get it done. Uh, look, U Europe is wealthy enough that there's no reason why they can't solve this problem. It's not as if we're talking about some impoverished country that uh, doesn't have any resources and uh, is you know, being buffeted by the world markets, and they need uh, you know, to come hat in hand uh, and get help. This is Europe with uh, some of the wealthiest countries on Earth, collectively one of the largest markets on Earth, if not the largest. And so mm -hmm. uh, if they muster the political will, they have the capacity to settle markets down make sure that uh, they are acting responsibly and that governments like Italy are able to finance their debt. Uh, and I think that Chancellor Merkel has made some progress uh, uh, with other European leaders in uh, uh, trying to move towards a fiscal compact where everybody is playing by the same rules uh, and nobody's acting irresponsibly. Uh, I think that's all for the good, but there's a short-term crisis that has to be resolved uh, to make sure that Markets have confidence that uh, Europe stands behind the euro. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can to push them uh, in, in a good direction on this because it has a huge impact on what happens here in the United States. They are our largest trading partner. And uh, uh, you know, we're seeing some positive signs in our economy. But if we see Europe tank, uh, that obviously could have uh, a big impact on our ability to generate the jobs that we need uh, here in the United States. I'm going to answer one last question, Kristen. Kristen, welcome. President, thank you. You just called on Congress not to leave until they mm -hmm. resolve this issue over the payroll tax cuts and unemployment insurance benefits. Can you say definitively that you will postpone your own 
vacation until these two matters are resolved. And also, on Iran, we've heard some sharper language from members of your administration about Iran recently. Are you intentionally trying to ramp up the pressure on Iran, and given that you've stated that no options are off the table, should we take that to mean that you are considering some other options? Um, no options off the table means I'm considering all options. Uh, Can you tell us uh, what those options might be? No. Uh, but what I can say with respect to Iran, I think it's very important uh, to remember, uh, particularly given some of the political noise out there, that this administration has systematically imposed the toughest sanctions on Iraq, uh, on Iran ever. When we came into office, the world was divided, Iran was unified and moving aggressively uh, on its own agenda. Today, Iran is isolated and the world is unified and applying the toughest sanctions that Iran's ever experienced and is having an impact inside of Iran. And that's as a consequence of the extraordinary work that's been done by our national security team. Uh, now, uh, Iran understands that they have a choice. They can break that isolation by acting responsibly and forswearing the development of nuclear weapons, which would still allow them to pursue peaceful nuclear power, like every other country that's a member of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Or they can continue uh, to operate uh, in a fashion that uh, isolates them from the entire world. Uh, and if they uh, are pursuing nuclear weapons, then I have said very clearly that is contrary to the, uh, the national security interests of the United States. It's contrary to uh, the national security interests of our allies, including Israel. Uh, and uh, we are going to work with the world community to prevent that. Um, with respect to my vacation, uh, I would not uh, ask anybody to do something I'm not willing to do myself. So uh, I know some of you might have been looking forward to a little sun and sand, uh, but the bottom line is, is that uh, we are going to stay here as long as it takes to make sure that the American people's taxes don't go up on January 1st and to make sure that folks who desperately need uh, unemployment insurance get that help. And, and there's absolutely no excuse for us not getting it done. Keep, keep in mind on, on the payroll tax uh, cut, this is something that Democrats and Republicans agreed to last year with little fanfare. And it was good for the economy. And independent economists estimate that for us to not extend it right now, to not extend payroll tax cut, not extend unemployment insurance, would have a significant adverse impact on our economy, right at the time when we're supposed to be growing the economy. So, uh, you know, when I hear uh, the Speaker or the Senate Republican leader, you know, wanting to dicker, wanting to see, you know, what can they extract from us in order to get this done, uh, my response to them is, just do the right thing. Focus on the American people, focus on the economy right now. I know the, the, uh, the suggestion right now is, is that somehow, uh, uh, well, this keystone issue uh, will create jobs. That's being determined by the State Department right now, and there is a process. But here's what I know. However many jobs might be generated by a Keystone Pipeline, there are going to be a lot fewer than the jobs that are created by extending the payroll tax cut and extending unemployment insurance. Get it done. And if not, you know, uh, maybe we'll have a, uh, uh, you know, a white Christmas here in Washington. And, and uh, I look forward to spending a lot of time with you guys. Uh, <laughs> between now and uh, the new year. All right? Thank you, guys.